Hey everyone, how are you doing? So Charles here, and uh, it's been a while, but you know, I don't have much time, but time is of the essence, I tell you what. So let's get into it. So this video is not about this. We are not one view. We are not this view. We are not that view. We are a bit of every view, but a bit of neither view because we are all about the truth on this channel. That is what this channel is all about, trying to detect the truth. So let's, so I just want you to know that in advance, we're not advocating any particular thing. We're just saying, look, what's reality? What's not reality? Okay, so let's get into it. So um, basically, um, 130 years ago, um, it, the science was settled. Basically, um, the earth was 20 million years old because the sun, which was gen which, whose entire heat was generated by comets and meteorites falling into it, um, uh, didn't have enough energy to have lasted beyond that age, 20 million, 50 million, 100 million years. And this was the view by none other than uh, William Thompson, who is this man right here. So uh, that was the view. And meanwhile, geologists were saying, well, hang on a sec, based on what we're seeing, the rocks, everything, we reckon the Earth's a billion years old. What do you think of that? Or at least 500 million, 700 million. And so it was like, everyone was saying, oh, the physicists are right because more maths, you know, and the geologists, less maths, they must be wrong. But then, of course, radiometric dating appeared and all suddenly the physicists went away because there was something more mathematical, more scientific than they were capable of understanding. So they said, oh, look, the geologists now have the science. Okay, so it must be, it must be billions of years old. It must be at least a billion years old. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Okay, before that, geologists were, they were looking at the rate at which sand would fall off a mountain, the rate, uh, uh, the, 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 the length of time it would take for a mountain to disappear, the length of time it would take for a beach to appear, and they were doing all these est estimates like that. And then we had the radiometric dating appear, and I believe the radiometric dating has skewed, totally skewed our understanding of geology, pushing it into billions of years, when in fact lots of geology actually forms instantaneously, and that is being skewed and away from reality. Okay, let's get into it. So uh, part of the reason I actually partly support um, um, modern uh, geology, ge geological uh, age of the earth is that um, um, basically we have some um, information from the previous civilization and they've passed down to us that the earth is about 4.32 billion years old. And that is actually kind of what we're saying today. So uh, that, it looks like they were using the same radiometric methods. Um, um, if, you, if you think this can't possibly be true, um, look, it's, it's not that hard. Look, we went from, from you know, the Middle Ages in it to advanced science in only a few hundred years. Um, it's, it's not that difficult. Um, we enjoy science. We like doing it. So why not? And the ancient people, if you read, you know, the ancient Indian books related to, to all this, you know, they, they, they clearly talk about, you know, um, things that we are starting to develop today. And if you think that's not true, well, there you go. Look, synthetic human embryos created in groundbreaking advance. So basically... Uh, this is actually exactly two days ago what is described in Genesis. Exactly what is described in Genesis. You take a chromosome, you t and and you make you make you basically make you know you know in fact Genesis is more advanced because it, it is creating a a person from a single chromosome. Just to, it is chromosome transplantation, um, which is quite interesting. And uh, part of um, what supports the theory of, of, of geology forming suddenly, which is what we're advocating in this and not taking billions of years, we're basically advocating catastrophism. And um, you don't have geology without catastrophes, as, as Velikovsky pointed out. And um, basically we have um, hexagonal shapes, and we pointed out this in a very early video on the channel. So the hexagonal shapes, every continent, every continent is a hexagonal shape. Why? Because this is a, a type of basaltic formation, basalt being a, a hexagonal shape. And this is, of course, uh, driven by internal chemistry. Um, what, what, what is causing these shapes, it, it, is, um, it, is, it is actually due to the internal chemistry on a very small scale, um, um, creating the, the hexagonality. And we're starting to get articles like this. Look, 2016, it's, 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 look, it's, it's a few years ago. Why was most of the Earth's coal made at once? And people are, are no longer ignoring this. Okay, why? Because a, a catastrophe occurred. Okay, so uh, human tunnel vision. We've talked about this in previous videos. Uh, uniformitarianism is everything happens gradually. But if everything happened gradually, there's no, that's not a mechanism for anything actually occurring. A mechanism requires energy. A chemical reaction requires a sudden burst, a sudden hit, a sudden catastrophe for it to occur. And all the, 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 the different types of dating, for example, they used uh, 
uh, argon argon dating, potassium argon dating to date Lucy, etc. All this is based on assumptions, and I want to show you what uh, what sort of assumptions we're talking about. Radioactive uh, uh, potassium um, decays to radioactive argon at a known rate. When volcanic rocks are formed and cooled, all argon within the rock is released into the atmosphere, and when the rock hardens, none can re-enter. This means that any argon present in a volcanic rock must have been produced by the decay of radioactive potassium, so measuring the, the ratio um, can enable scientists to date the sample. Yeah, okay. So, and then we can date, uh, you know, things to 4.3 billion to 100,000 years. Okay, look, that's that's fair enough. But every time, every time in my life that I've read about radiometric dating, I've never, I've never actually seen any real proof that it's measuring what they say it measures. Never, never. So Andrew Cross, um, and we're going to talk about punctuated equilibrium very briefly because we, there's a phenomenon in geology where all the, all the um, all the all, all 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 the animals disappear, and they start again. Suddenly, they, they they suddenly they spawn again in a different direction. Different type of species appear, and this can only be caused by catastrophes. So basically, evolution is saying catastrophes are real. They happen. They have happened in, in, in our past. And um, Andrew Cross is quite interesting because he actually um, seems to have. Um, it's basically in a hermetic flask. He 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 electrocrystallized insects. He created insects, um, possibly. Um, another thing he did was he, he rapidly created minerals using electro electromotive potentials. And this is something that is still not being done today. He was doing things that are not being done today. He also, by the way, he also inspired Tesla's building of the Wardenclyffe Tower. He, he did something very similar. Tesla read his, uh, his uh, wife's book. All his papers were destroyed. His, um, his basically, his... his uh, his family were very clever, but his his everything was destroyed in the 1890s. And 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 some suspect he met Mary Shelley, and uh, there was a Frankenstein connection inspiration. So and and he had a, a only one one room of his his house exists, and uh, he had a very look. He had a very famous uh, he had a very famous uh, a very illustrious family. Look, his great uncle also uh, the great uncle of scientist completed a fashionable Arcadian garden, including five linked pools, a seven time like this is incredible. Anyway, let's continue. So panspermia. So if you can suddenly create life for electro electromotive potential, um, suddenly we, we, we can, and, and, and if you can suddenly accelerate the, the growth of materials, I really love the scientists, the, the growth of materials uh, for electromotive potential. Um, what about electric universe and the fact that life is likely found throughout the universe? Remember one of our earlier videos, we actually said that the only, it's not selfish gene, as some illustrious scientist pointed out, it's selfish DNA. <laughs> the DNA itself wants to survive, and it uses the gene to survive. It uses the gene, it uses evolution to build up biomass on every single planet it encounters to make creatures larger and larger and larger. It's the only point of doing it. We look at what we'll just look at that. It's it's as simple as that. This video is all over the place, but I'm going to release it anyway. And it's, it's fine. You know, this is fine. And you know, I'm going to actually put many of these videos um, onto my second channel. Um, uh, I, I couldn't search for, the, for that video. It didn't work because I. This is why I'm not making videos anymore. Like you can't search for them on YouTube. YouTube is blocking my videos since 2018. It's ridiculous. But anyway, um, look, we've talked about that. Clues to the origins of life. What's what's really happening? Um, uh, the, the point. The point of it all. Anyway, uh, let's continue. So I'll, I'll put many of uh, more videos on the blue moon. Um, okay, shrinking Earth. If, if Earth suddenly shrinks, suddenly expands, all, all the crystals, the hexagonal crystals on the planet can break up, change shape. We start, we start to have something resembling the theory of continental drift, but from a chemical perspective. So things happening rapidly, suddenly. Okay, punctuated equilibrium. What happens is species are in equilibrium, boom, something happens, the fossil record changes. There is a sudden shift in the fossil record. Why? Um, because something happens over a very short period of time. If it happens over a very short period of time and new species suddenly appear, look, in 10,000 years, this is actually something that's not explained. This is something which is perhaps driven by electricity, driven by something similar to what Andrew Cross hypothesized. There is an electrical component to evolution. Fascinating. And this electrical component, guess what? It can build rocks at a terrific pace, as Andrew Cross discovered. And that is one of the main points of this video. Um, suddenly we can have a massive change uh, in, in the Earth. Suddenly the Earth can cool down, continents can form. Suddenly the, the, the Earth can heat up and all the rock can melt. 
And of course, everyone says, oh, Nikola Tesla, blah, blah, blah. But I want you to forget about Nikola Tesla. This guy read all these old books. He read he read Andrew Cross's book. He read all this. Some think he, but this is what I want to tell you. See, see, lots of people think, okay, this is the great scientist. Now, now people are thinking, this is the great scientist. Okay, there's no one else. And, and they're saying, look, he invented the fluorescent light. No, no, he didn't invent the fluorescent light. Francis Hawksby invented the fluorescent light. I bet none of you know, know this. I, I found out by reading his book. Tesla read this as well. He was his, Tesla was a historian. That's how he knew. That's where he got many of his inventions. So, you know, you, lots of people just accept, accept, accept things. Let's not accept. Let's expand. You want a guinea? Um, about five years ago, I made a video saying this is very similar to an alkaline earth crystal. Um, it is not a, uh, a normal rock. Why does it, it not look like a normal rock? Some electrical potential has helped to crystallize a solution which has been mixed with uh, rock, and it has formed shapes which can be seen through the microscope in, earth, in alkaline earth crystals. And this, this may have happened slowly through some electrical potential, or it may have happened very, very suddenly due to a pressure temperature drop. Why? We don't know. Thank you.